सच स्टार्ट करें हाय गाइस माय नेम इज जयवर्धन सिंह एंड दैट इज राजवर्धन सिंह फाइनली आई हैव बीन एबल टू गेट अ होल्ड ऑफ हिम बिकॉज़ ही वाज आउट इन द हिल्स एंड ही जस्ट गॉट डन विद हिज एग्जाम्स एंड वी हैव डिसाइडेड दैट आवर टुडेस कन्वर्सेशन वुड बी अ सेकंड एपिसोड टू द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट दैट इज हैपनिंग इन मणिपुर व्हिच इज हिट इट्स 13th month and we would uh, basically explore those aspects which we weren't able to explore in our previous episodes we have decided to continue this series uh, till this conflict drags on so whatever uh, aspects that we miss in this episode we will cover in the third episode and hopefully uh, the fourth episode and i hope it does not go beyond the fourth episode and the conflict by then finishes but i don't think it's going to happen anyway raj so uh, what are the things that we need to cover this time today i have been going through a lot of uh, twitter feeds hmm. i think twitter is a very x now x. very important way to gauge public opinion because uh, fortunately or unfortunately i think more fortunately information is decentralized democratized people can speak their views and opinions directly on a public platform and if uh, the state is proactive enough the state can uh, gauge the idea of what people are doing and what people are thinking yes i have uh, been following today what's been going on on twitter and uh, there is obviously the maithi perspective mm. and there's obviously the kukki perspective mm. so what i could by and large tell was that the maithis are still for example uh, uh, and this is an objective value neutral statement i am not saying whether they are right or wrong and i will not defend or support any stance here uh, maithis are uh, questioning the ability of the government to restrict uh, inflow of myanmaris uh, people into uh, the state of manipur the maithis also feel that there has been a quote unquote genocide of non christians in the state uh their accusations are that uh, you know mha has failed to prevent this kind of inflow from myanmar they mainly think that there is a que- there are questions to be raised about the neutrality of the assam rifles so these are overall uh, the you know views that the maithi community is hold from what i could gauge from twitter naturally i am not claiming that these twitter pages speak for the whole community but i'm just get uh, speaking about the limited understanding i've been able to gauge now they also claim that uh, these inflow of immigrants from myanmar who are illegal immigrants pre- preserve presents a great concern to the security of the state of manipur and uh, by and large to india and uh, the maithi uh, the cookie perspective that i've seen on twitter and on social media is that many of them have now started asking for a union territory as a solution so a hashtag is going around demanding for a separate uh, union territory for cookies some are asking for uh, reimposition of armed forces special act, powers act in the state many pages are saying that uh, cookie zo communities will not uh, stay under the tyranny of maithis anymore so what is evident is that a deep fissure has been created now there is conflict blatant conflict in the state 13 months have passed 225 people have died officially officially somewhere around unofficial figures are around 300 okay which is like so, the closest yeah, number uh, there is there are very unfortunate deaths nearing 300 if yeah. unofficial sources are to be believed and uh, the fissure is nowhere to be uh, yeah. healed and it's unfortunate because it's our indian state and yeah. these are all indian citizens who are now nearly warring each other yes Jai. so uh, to to basically complement what you just mentioned about the conflict i would also remind you viewers that in the last episode about manipur i was lifting a lot of information from this book by mrs nandita haksar uh, who is a phenomenal human rights uh, lawyer who is based out of manipur but is from uh, kashmir if i'm not wrong and uh, she is married to a thankul naga and uh, she has given a very very balanced opinion about the conflict the book is called shooting the sun i had mentioned this book in the first episode as well 
and uh, now uh, as we go ahead and as this conflict rages on we're going to talk about a few more aspects from this book which we are going to correlate with the ground reality of the situation now what is happening extensively is that a lot of blame is being put on quote unquote narco terrorism how would you define narco terrorism now narco terrorism as a concept was first used in peru and it basically meant that drug cartels using terror tactics in order to influence government policy so that the drug related activities specifically in regions which were high on drug creating capacity is not hindered so that is the correct definition for narco terrorism and the first time that this term was actually used in uh, the context of manipur was used by an ips officer who recently resigned called t brinda now t brinda is an interesting uh, character in the story because uh, i think uh, correction i think she was a state police service officer no 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 she is an ips officer no no she is a state police state officer. asp uh, deputy sp promoted to additional sp okay but very much uh, a, state a state police, police okay officer. so she was a state police officer t brinda and uh, she was known as a person who was basically going against the quote unquote uh, uh, drug mafias now what the maithi community in general has been saying is that the kukki community is is only and only involved in the narco terror activities and they are the ones who are basically growing the most amounts of poppy and selling them for the wider trade of uh, uh, of uh, heroin and other poppy related uh, poppy related drugs now according to uh, mrs huxer uh uh the, uh the the arrests that have been made in manipur from uh, 2017 to to 2023 um most of these arrests have actually come uh from uh, under the ndps act have actually come from the pangal maithi muslim community which uh, which is around 1083 then on number 2 it's the kukki chin community and then on number 3 it's the maithi community 381 so it somehow takes us back to the economic state of the of of the state it is the poorest pangal community which is uh which is involved the most in uh, such arrests then comes the cookies and then finally the maithis mm-hmm. so where does that you know take us now according to uh t brinda there there are four uh, uh, four four players in the whole uh, uh, whole uh, drug business in manipur uh, there are the financiers then there are the militants then there are the government agents and then there are the different uh political uh, intermediaries. uh po- political inter- intermediaries and they are the ones who actually get the most profits mm. and in fact uh, t brinda also arrested this uh, gentleman from the cookies or community called uh, loha uh, pardon my pronunciation uh, luk hosai luk hosai zu luk hosai zu uh for carrying around 4.5 kg of heroin some 280000 yw tablets and 58 lakhs in cash now through the now t brinda alleges that it was because of the state government's pressure that this cookies or gentleman was released and the state government was mostly run by people from the yeah, maithi community. community so i don't think it is as black and white as a lot of communal forces are forcing us to see because i think behind the smoke and mirrors there are a lot of bigger players who are involved a lot of money is involved and what they are doing in essentiality is that letting the poor people of these two communities literally kill each other while the rich and influential people of this community of these two communities on the side collaborate with each other and make the most profits that's an interesting take yes uh, i think that uh, T Brinda had in another interview also blamed uh, the incumbent chief minister of Manipur for a lot of the drug trade and narco terrorism yes. going on. Yes. Yes, that's why she uh, re- returned her gallantry award. She got a gallantry award for her work that she did against uh, narco terrorism and uh, she she returned the gallantry award. There was there were also you know protests which were uh, pressurizing the chief minister of Manipur to resign last year. and then there was a dramatic sequence of events where he 
wrote a letter of resignation then it was torn by his supporters and yeah. all of that but uh, i think uh, long story short uh, uh, as the present situation lies people need to start asking important questions about a whether the government of india's approach in dealing with manipur crisis has been um, effective enough because 13 months have passed violence has not reduced and fissures have not been healed rather it can be argued that they have very much worsened yes uh, there were protests which uh, many people supported supporters of the some central government were also behind them that maybe some kind of governor's rule or president's rule can yeah. be uh, established in the state and the state government could be suspended and the inc- incumbent chief minister could resign um, there were many voices behind this uh, uh, this line of thinking i, I think t brinda was one of them yes and uh, i don't want to misquote anybody but uh, this is just from what i can recall in my memory yeah so t brinda was also forced to apologize by the extremist elements of the maithi society i'm not going to take the names of the organizations that were involved but uh, they literally forced her to apologize and and uh, say that uh, they also accused her of defaming the maithi community mm. and uh, that basically forced her to declare that it would be cbi and nis job to make the final decision as to whether certain government intermediaries were involved in the drug business or not i would like to add one more thing as to uh, as to the aspect of the demographic change that is happening in manipur now keep everything aside nandita haksar is married to a thankul naga she is a hindu kashmiri thankul nagas are christians mostly divided into different churches she herself is a very very secular woman she in her book herself she has def- defended a lot of people from myanmar Uh, and has ensured that a, pe- a lot of people from Myanmar got in refugee status in India, uh, irrespective of their ethnic identity. So, I feel she has gone on to mention that the missionaries in the northeast of India, specifically in places like Manipur, have this tactic of extreme proselytization, where they have gone to the extent of intimidating other religious groups into believing that their way of Christianity. is the right way of christianity in fact even she mentions in her book that uh, she was actually being uh, being patronized by one of the pastors in one of these uh, community meetings to you know renounce her religion and like you know accept the ways of christ so some of the accusations that the maithi community has against the quote and quote christian uh, mobilization in northeast is not not based on complete lies yeah might might it's be not accurate it's not exactly so there are certain issues that this government needs to handle with utmost sensitivity while taking into consideration the uh, grievances of both communities they have to ensure that there is a uh, an assurance that is given to the maithis that their population does not dwindle after this and there is also an assurance that this government needs to give the cookies and the other christian groups that they are not discriminated against and that they are not targeted the way that they were targeted in the valley in 2023 because because of the activities of certain extremist religious groups and that includes the maithi groups as well the masses end up taking up arms against each other and these parties just like you know witness the whole fiasco from the sides yeah i think that and uh, now to be fair to the government which i am very critical of in yeah. this situation i think that now when the fissures have become so deepened being uh, neutral also becomes difficult because no. nobody is willing to look eye to eye mm. so how do you bring somebody to a negotiating table when both communities in many cases refer to each other as terrorists yeah very interestingly you spoke about demographic change and uh, when i was going through a lot of twitter pages of uh, maithi hmm. communities uh, many of them had tweeted pictures of uh, uh, ndtv's news reports which claimed that uh, there are certain villages in the manipur myanmar border area where uh, the ethnicity has totally 
been shifted in favor of quote unquote illegal immigrants from Myanmar so indigenous populations have been reduced to a minority in some border villages of Manipur that is the claim made by certain organizations and now in places like more yes, yes yes and today been more is a border town totally yes but uh, so i would assume it would be more difficult to differentiate there but more had a uh, significant yeah. uh, maithi population which is yeah. totally driven out but we to, can share the news yeah, 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 but article. to counter that to counter that what cookies would say that all the cookies from the valley have been driven out all the cookie chinzo people have been driven out from the valley yeah that's again a so and argument. the valley is the more prosperous area hmm. the valley has the airport so where do the cookies get the access to the mainland of the country yeah i'm so the, the saying, valley has the fertile land exactly so saying that just maithis have been wiped out from one place is also unfair real interesting hmm. take that i've seen today is uh, from the swaraj magazine actually I was reading a article which was fairly critical of the government yeah. in a magazine which is by and large known to be pro state. It's I'm it's a pro RSS. It's an RSS magazine, so Raj, if I'm not wrong. Okay, fair. Then RSS hmm. also has been the organizer. Organizer is RSS. My bad. So Raj is post pro state. You're right. RSS has been interestingly yeah. critical of the government yeah. on the Manipur issue itself. I think uh, the. RSS chief Shri Mohan Bhagwat uh, at the uh, onset of the beginning of the new government uh, stated mm-hmm. that we need to start sort of uh, focusing on peace building has been by and large critical of the government uh, government's approach in Manipur maybe not so much outwardly but uh, that's the noise people are beginning to hear these days anyway uh, the article written by uh, Shri Jaydeep Majumdar on swaraj magazine uh, something that i enjoyed reading uh, says that uh, mha's uh, meeting which was chaired by the union home minister uh, on the 18th or the 19th of june has uh, been a very 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 incomplete approach into dealing with manipur and uh, they didn't include uh, nbirin singh it's, it's a failure yeah. uh, on part of the union home ministry yeah. to leave aside including nbirin singh mm-hmm. i think the only attendees in the meeting mm-hmm. were uh, the union home minister the union home secretary i think some representatives from the crpf uh, maybe shri kuldeep singh was there yes but the main the main issue highlighted in the meeting was that uh, there was no naga no kukki no maiti no stakeholder who belongs to the state of manipur was actually included in the meeting this is almost like uh, how we are critical of simon commission <laughs> uh, yeah the simon commission or erstwhile you know british uh, actions where uh, only the white man would be making decisions for the native population of india and this is exactly the criticism that has come in from the maithis because i watched i also found this article on twitter yeah. and the people who were commenting on this were literally saying that you can't rule us like you are our colonial masters yeah. you will have to make an integrated approach in administration the problem is interestingly the article goes on to say something which i deeply agree with the problem is the union home ministry views this purely as a security issue hmm. you can say that see that in the statements of the security advisor to the state shri kuldeep singh you can see that in the statements of the union home minister also uh, the issue here is not purely a cross border narco terror maithi kukki issue alone that may be a big element of it but there is also a parallel story of political isolation going on yes there is a deep fissure which is coming in from decades and decades of both communities feeling a sense of isolation and both communities slowly separately but most definitely questioning the credibility of the indian state and india's security forces we will as indians we will have to look these issues face to face because these are opinions that i'm not making up on my own now you can literally go to twitter and find a lot of manipuris echoing these voices i'm literally just consolidating and presenting these information yeah so now reports have started coming in again from this very article that uh, the security advisor to the state and the director general of police who was rec- who was picked up on the recommendation of the security advisor both are overrunning and outrunning the decisions overturning the decisions made by the chief minister so in a way the legislative assembly of the state is being de- 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 delegitimized so uh, i think the mha needs to make the approach more political but uh, you know what uh, to counter uh, your uh, approach i i totally agree with what you are saying but i can give you another counter argument to this 
uh i think uh, india's uh, i think my my opinion right now might might sound a little uh, uh, cons- uh, conspiracy based but uh, similar types of violence happened uh, between the nagas and the cookies as well in the 90s mm-hmm. and uh, almost uh, similar amount of people were killed mm-hmm. and it almost took 3 to 4 years to you know settle down and even in that conflict it is said that the nagas and the cookies were literally at each other's throats extensive violence were happening against them and there were instances of beheadings gang rapes villages being destroyed in fact uh, later on the naga community started accusing the indian state of literally using cookies as like a pawn in their greater political game against the nagas and the maithis because whenever these two communities became extensively secessionists the indian state used them against these two communities so that like you know more fissure is created in the state and the demand for secessionism goes away this is so another you're saying that the deep state is behind the could be that's conspiracy that's, that's, conspiracy yeah, i mean uh, we don't get into speculation i guess but uh, because, uh, stay say because i feel that if if one section of the population has already witnessed like you know such grotesque violence say 30 years ago uh and now another side of the violence has come up i think uh, give it 3 to 4 years uh, maybe it like you know stabilizes again the point is if mm. 225 people have died annually yeah. in 3 to 4 5 years the dead toll will be touching 1300 1400 at this rate yeah now uh, i think the problem here lies in uh, if a government is championing development of the northeastern region yeah. if that is one of the uh, advertising areas where the government claims that it has done good work and in the infrastructure sense they may have done actually very good work where it comes to Roads. building road infrastructure and airports in the northeast mm-hmm. but i think uh, a proactive approach would be required to issue some kind of political isolation i am not saying the the problem here is that i am not saying that hmm. many manipuris are feeling isolated hmm. manipuris themselves themselves are, are saying, saying that, that they are very isolated. isolated so i i don't understand this truth denial mechanism yeah. that our union home ministry is acting with you have to you have to up apply more expertise than just appointing a former dg crpf as a security advisor and just say okay there is a, there is another very interesting perspective to it which i also read in this book mm-hmm. uh, it's regarding the plantation of uh, palm trees for the production of palm oil mm-hmm. in manipur now one of the major palm oil producers of the northeast is mizoram and mm-hmm. palm trees are extre- ex- extremely water intensive uh, crops now it would have a devastating impact on manipur's climate which is a given it is said that in areas where these palm tree plantations were planned these were the areas which faced the most amount of violence and it is said that some thousands of hectares are required for this project to come up which would be like the uh, which would be like one of the greatest economic wonders now i don't see what the relevance of palm oil is because a lot of the the economies are going away from palm oil we can already see that happening in indonesia we can already see that happening in different parts of the country where they are trying to move away from palm oil i don't know what this particular scheme of the state and the central government is trying to you know achieve right oh uh, that's an interesting take i think that uh, what my focus has been throughout this conversation is to see how the present situation is to be addressed i think what uh, would go a long way into uh, solving the manipur issue would be to address the urgency of the matter continue the security approach mm-hmm. i agree that uh, narco terrorism border security <coughs> are deep yeah. threats that are integrated into yeah. the conflict but maybe explore the idea of bringing in political solutions also yeah. make bring in an all party resolution on where to solve how to solve this crisis maybe the prime minister could in, in, in visit imphal try to bring in or separately even meet leaders of both communities try to give as much political representation to these communities as possible to bring in uh, more and more persons from manipur from mainstream political parties of manipur 
ex speakers of the legislative assembly ex mlas local leaders bring them to delhi bring them on the negotiating table ask them for the logical next step i think that approach even if it has happened may have been lackadaisical yeah. we stopped exploring this idea at some point there were attempts in 2023 you would still hear of uh, peace committees or something like that but i think uh, this is a worthy pursuit you should not uh, stop exploring this and make it a total security approach the solution is political the requirements and demands are political mm. the central police organizations and uh, uh, retired ips officers can only do so much the the real difference will be made with when cookies and the maiti start hearing the prime minister directly address these issues in an emergency footing of sorts yeah i think it's high well, time that ends there but please yeah i think it's high time that the prime minister goes and visits and like you know at least addresses the issue in imphal where he tells the citizens that he's with them and he will solve the problem at least like you know that would be good uh, pr what do you think yeah i absolutely agree uh, the degree of isolationism will end mm, i think yeah. i am saying this uh, as a uh, as a you know as any community in india would feel included when the head of the central government who happens to be a popular leader in the country uh, if he visits the state and if he brings in some assurances a sense of political inclusion might come in i think uh, when that inclusion when that sense of political inclusion can be backed up by some more uh, strengthening of security apparatus some more strengthening of uh, border security by the assam rifles and all those organizations i think uh, the fissures will not go away immediately mm-hmm. but a working relationship can be formed and sometimes that's what you need more urgently yeah because in the 90s the maithis really helped the cookies who were uh, coming into the valley after fleeing the violence that they were facing in places like ukrul from the nagas so maithi supported the cookies and you know it was like a fraternal existence i think uh, hopefully it goes back to normal and yeah. uh, hopefully it will but yeah. uh, the government of india will have to go into action mode for this yes. so i this think this cannot um, be uh, one of the issues that yeah. you leave out in the back and wait for it to solve itself that those will be our conclusion concluding remarks yeah. please feel free to give us any feedback any yeah. notable criticism even disagreements are welcome as long as the language is diplomatic and respectful please disagree with us in as many words as you can obviously we will appreciate respectful language of course and disrespect we will delete and we will not apologize like t brinda bro come on <laughs> yeah and uh, keep watching uh, we uh, are uh, hoping for this conflict to end early our yeah. brothers and sisters in manipur hopefully everybody can go back to Uh, living in peace yeah and we won't stop talking about the issue as long as there are fissures we every few days we might record an issue because uh, i think this conversation does not need to stop i think next month we'll record yeah. another one yeah. yeah it should continue we will yeah. always keep talking thank you so much thank you like subscribe baby